Hey there, welcome to my channel. I've been carrying this story with me for nearly 15 years, which is almost half of my life. I'm 32 now. It's finally time to share it with the world and hopefully offer some help along the way. My journey involves a young high schooler running from the unknown, being taken from my home by agents and sent to Turnabout Ranch, battling addiction and even owning halfway houses in sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I currently live in Pennsylvania, and that is where I was also born and raised. Life wasn't always easy for me. I lived in dirt while in recovery in Narcotics Anonymous. Relapsed after five years of being clean, which was a huge deal for me. And you'll learn that as my story, as I tell my story. Um, and becoming a parent twice while striving to stay clean and sober, I've made countless attempts to break free from my struggles and my addiction, face two arrests, experience jail time for the first time, hit rock bottom multiple times, and had to rebuild my life from scratch and discovered my true self. Along this path, I've learned how to re-love myself, discover motherhood and my true self. Along this path, I've learned how to love actually myself before being able to love other people as well. Unravel the truth about having our narcissistic nar narcissist mother. Um, and that's something I'm just actually placing and putting together now um, after all these years. Um, and that's more of my current story. Um, I'm going to start out with telling you guys all about my past and what got me and what built me to who I am today. But um, and then I'm going to tell you guys about what I'm going through now, because, boy, it doesn't stop. Um, you don't get clean and uh, then all the craziness stops. I mean, it's a daily thing that you're going through. And even with four years clean now, um, I'm still rebuilding. I'm still rebuilding and I'm nowhere close to being finished at all. Um, and of course, discovering motherhood and dealing with mental health has been an ongoing battle for me. That was probably almost the start in the beginning of my story, along with a lot of other challenges. In the story I'm about to share, there are many, I might be jumping around a lot. I'm sorry, that's probably what's put me off the most about doing this on camera is I know I'll be jumping around because a lot over the years, I can't pinpoint, <clears throat> pinpoint a date or a time when um, some of this stuff's happened. Um, so it'll be about a time period I'll give you. Um, and it's far from perfect. I'm really far from perfect, but I'm trying to be the best that I can be. Um, I hope that you can find something valuable out of my story because I think that I've been through a lot, um, a lot of different things. And I think that nowadays with mental health being so known and out there now to talk about, um, like I was just telling my children about, it's nothing to be ashamed of at all. And I wish that I had someone to talk to me about it back then, all these different things that I went through because I had nobody at all, at all. So I just want to give a little bit of hope to somebody, even just anybody at all. If you ever, anyone wants to reach out, talk, anything, seriously, I'm here. So if you're still here, thank you so much. I'm sure the intro was hard to watch. Okay. I wrote up a little bit, um, for the intro because it was going to be hard for me to talk and like say, so that's why it seemed like it was written. However, it is easier for me just to speak freely. Um, and I think that's best for me to do for my story. So if you're here, thank you. And I hope you stay. I think you can get a lot out of it. Um, so like I said in the intro, I've been trying to do this for a while now. Um, it took me a while to get my confidence, um, self-confidence. Um, and as you'll hear throughout my story, you'll probably be able to tell why I didn't have any confidence for a long time, but I'm here today. Thank goodness. So, um, my journey and my story really probably starts back to when around puberty, um, that's when everything really changed for me. Um, and I would say that's around 
seventh or eighth grade. Um, I don't know for sure, but um, after I went through puberty, um, it seemed as though um, I, that is this point when my body seemed to not be regulated at all. Um, and I'm not sure if that's just when like the hormones in my body started really acting up or it's just my body was getting whatever the hormones for say. Um, I do know a couple years later, um, I tried multiple birth controls, um, more or less like I got the shot, the depo shot, and I ended up in the, uh, mental hospital. Um, that was maybe one of my first visits in the mental hospital. Um, back to my mother, she, I ended up in mental hospital about three or four times, 302. That's what it's a Baker act is called in Pennsylvania. Um, I never tried to myself ever, like didn't, I did not make an attempt, I should say ever. And I never actually planned one, nothing like that. Um, however, um, I would make comments to my mom. Um, I grew up in a home with two older brothers and a mom and a dad, um, a pretty great household for the most part. However, I was the youngest child. Um, my brothers were athletes. They were really great. Um, and a lot of the attention was on them. Um, and my dad always worked. He uh, owns his own business and he's always been an amazing. My mom, on the other hand, um, she, once I got to that age of puberty, it seemed as though it was a struggle and my dad got put in between and he still is to this day. And, um, it was a control thing. She's always had it over me. Um, and it got more and more manipulative and showed as I grew. Uh, and my brothers were out of the house. It was, there was more time me and her together and, um, it just became more toxic. And when my dad was working, my brothers were out of the house at school and college and all, it was this vicious thing. And then it was my word against hers. My dad would get involved. Um, it was insane. Um, and that was my whole childhood. And so I got the depot shot. Um, and because my parents thought I was like, very, uh, promiscuous or whatever. And which I wasn't, I had a boyfriend, boyfriend at the time. Um, and I honestly, um, don't even know. I don't think I had done even anything at that point. Um, but because I had a boyfriend, um, and my parents were the type of, my mom was the type of person that always wanted, you have to bring everyone to the door for us to me. And, um, I was embarrassed. I was late middle school and all, all this at this point, And um, I know your parents want to make sure you're okay with who you go out with. And I totally understand. I'm a parent now myself. I have a 10 year old and an eight year old, um, especially in today's day and age. However, back then, you know, it was a different world. But um, as I got older and older, I, I didn't want to bring my parents, my, all my friends to the door, especially whatever. They went to meet everyone. It was like they didn't do that with my brothers, but they went the extra mile for me all the time. I know I was a girl, but. It was just a lot and they really festered on top of me all the time. Anyhow, um, as time went on, I was, it seemed though I was allergic to that depo shot. Um, because immediately after I got it, it was supposed to last three months. I started acting insane. Um, just started, I didn't say I was going to myself. I would make other threats, um, and say things that, um, probably I shouldn't say, but I would just say stuff, uh, to my mom, um, just to make her mad, but like, it wasn't me, but I didn't directly say I was going to do that, but uh, I would say stuff. And then well, she would call the police because she didn't know how to handle me. I was out of control. Um, and I was constantly just leaving, um, to get out of the house. Like I just didn't want to be home. I didn't really know what was going on with me at this time. I, there's a lot of, home stuff. So as I was saying, I would be, um, in and out of the house, um, running to friends houses. I would stay a week too, um, cut off from my parents and they would beg for me to come home, whatnot. It was kind of became a typical, um, and 
through this time, I'd be going to a therapist, uh, quite a few, um, and I was still going to school. Um, that's one thing I did do. I did graduate high school. Um, but a little back further, um, this was, I don't know, late middle school, I guess. Um, I would leave and all of this. Um, so finally my mom was getting me into different therapist. Um, if my, th if the therapist would kind of agree with what my mom was saying, um, and we'd have a, ther a family therapy session, which would be like one or two sessions in probably, um, then I would get up and, you know, I would be angry, upset. And I've never opened up fully um, because I never knew myself at that time. And uh, when you're being forced to go um, at this young age, you know, it was me being told, do this, do that. Um, and you're the problem. So if the my mom and the therapist were ganging up, let's say, I would close down, just shut down. I wouldn't open up at all. And this would go on over and over again. And if it was the other way, the therapist actually saw what was really going on with me um, and saw the actual problems. Um, and when we had the family session, they would try to actually help me um, and tell my mom, maybe do this, maybe that. Then my mom would uproar, leave, walk out of the therapist. That's it. Let's go. Blah, blah, blah. And then I'd never go back. My mom wouldn't let me go back. So this, ha I probably saw about 15 different therapists um, within a year or two. Um, the final straw um, before me going to turn about ranch was um, as years went on, the same patterns over and over again, Me mental hospitals. If I, you know, made a, oh, I'm going to leave, you know, or I'm going to, I'm just going to hurt myself. I'm tired of this. Um, that's what I would say, you know, and then I'd have two minutes later, the police would be here. They would take me mental hospital. Then, um, I would stay there, you know, three, four days, um, up to a week. Then the, when your baker acted, a judge would have to talk, meet with your parents and all and determine if you like you need anything longer. Um, all the time I would go home after because I didn't need any more services. Um, and so it was a cycle. And then, so that was always the threat is the 302 Baker Act. Sorry if I'm saying both, that's the same thing. That's when um, you're harming yourself um, or trying to. Um, so my mom, I feel, I feel as though I take advantage of that uh, and kind of use it as a threat towards me. Um, Cause I wasn't ever actually trying to, but I know, um, you know, your parents don't ever know what you're really, what you could do, you know? Um, so I won't hold that over her. Uh, you know, she didn't know for sure, but, um, what I was saying, sorry, I'm all over, I do have ADHD. That's another thing I have as an adult. Um, so, and, um, I do want to mention, as I look back on my video, I was just recording further. Um, people, when I've made TikToks, make fun of like, oh, my mouth going like this. I have um, had, it doesn't bother me anymore. I have confidence. So, but I do talk fast and I'm practicing that. And um, it took me so long to be able to look at myself on the screen um, I hated that. Oh, I couldn't even look at myself in the mirror for years. So this is a side note. I know I've gained so many ticks, like facial ticks and things that I do, um, from the substances I've used in the past, um, this past run four years ago really messed me up. Like, and that'll be a whole nother video I'll do in the future, but, um, I'm aware. <laughs> okay. These are things that I'm working on daily. So don't leave comments below being hateful because I'm aware of what I do. Um, I'm working on them. So you can say all the mean comments, all that you want. It's not going to bother me. You just look stupid. I'm here sharing my story. So I just wanted to um, say that, like I'm aware. Okay. I'm working on it. And um, I know the things that I've used in the past and I know how badly they've traumatized me. Okay. Um, uh, these are things that I never thought, Oh, I, it'll affect me. Oh, it does. And it didn't for many uses until this last run. And it 
somehow whatever it was cut with ruins me. And this is four years clean, still having these weird movements and it's insane. Sorry about that. Um, so back to what I was saying. So, um, I would, you know, the Baker acting three or two and what happened a lot. And then finally, when I was in high school, at one point I was met this one boyfriend, I had a year or two older than me. Um, he did sell stuff. Um, but nothing, it, I'm not going to say nothing crazy cause it is something pills. Um, but I, he wasn't doing them, uh, but he was selling them. Uh, but he would never try to get me to do them or anything. Uh, but he was older. And of course I was into the bad guy thing, which is so stupid. Don't go for those bad guys. Seriously. Um, but, uh, <laughs> my mom hated it once again. Was, well, oh, let me meet him. Let me meet him. And I'm like, no. And then I would just take off, uh, me again. Um, so after many attempts um, and many crying nights at home of him being with other girls and all this stuff, he was just a punk. Um, someone had answered my phone while I was working at Dairy Queen. I finally got a job. Um, another guy, one of his like friends or whatever that, you know, how high school, like you hang out with groups of kids. Well, one of his, one of his like friends, friends, whatever answered my phone. I probably was honestly trying to make him mad or something, which was not the right thing to do. And as soon as his friend, one of the, his guy friends answered the, my phone, he and a bunch of his little other friends showed up to my work, ran in, they had guns and all this stuff. He was not like a, one of those kids, but I don't even know if it was real, but anyhow, the whole police swatted the whole like, um, parking lot. And that is immediately when, like, after I told, I came home, freaked out, told my parents and the next night. I was woken up in the middle of the night to agents in the middle of my bed, uh, picking me up out of bed, 401 or 411 and taking me out of bed, say goodbye to your parents. And I mean, a female and a male out of my bed. I'm going to take this picture. Where is it? There's a picture of um, me at Turnabout. It was right here. Where the hell did it go? Oh, right here. I don't know why we still have this. This is me at, at Turnabout Ranch. Mm -hmm. Trying to get it without the window. Me at Turnabout Ranch. Um, these are the, the horses that they have there. This is what you wear every day. Picking me up to go to Turnabout Ranch, like straight out of bed. They pick you up in the middle of the night. Of the, pick me, pick you up in the middle of the night. That way you're a little distraught um, and that you try not to run. Um, and they walked me outside. My brothers and my mom were right here. I still live in the same house, right here. And um, I was like crying, half asleep. I'm like, what's going on? Thought it was a dream and they said you know you're coming with us it wouldn't tell me where we were going got in the car um, my parents handed them a bag that was already packed with clothes and stuff and um i guess they had been looking into this place they had been looking into turnabout ranch um and uh, that was their final straw um i have so many letters i'll have to read some um they make me cry every time i look at them uh, my grandmother now who has passed away um, you know, since then, I would write her letters saying I would, in the mountains, I'd see my grandfather. I was like so out of it. Um, it was so sad. But um, we drove, they drove me to Philadelphia Airport and we got on a plane to Vegas, I want to say. And then for a five hour drive from Vegas. But this whole time, I had no clue where I was going. Like at all. They wouldn't say nothing. Um, it was horrible. We got there. I remember it was evening time when we got there because it was a little dark and not too bad. Um, and I just saw circles, circles on the ground with little huts. I had no clue. My parents had always threatened to send me away. Um, I never believed them. I never thought, oh, they'll send me somewhere. No, they did. Um, I had no clue what to expect. I had no, no clue of nothing. <laughs> um, I was there 45 days and then my parents would come visit. Uh, I could stay with them. I remember there was this one hotel. It was like a little cottage place. I remember I took the longest bath ever <laughs> there. I just laid there in the bath because you shower. There's not even like a shower. The first, the first couple days, first whatever level, you're literally getting water down at the creek. 
with this huge bucket and then you stand there and put it over yourself. That's how you bathe. Um, you live in a six by six dirt circle. Um, but you know what? I really, and then the other 45 days after your parents leave, then they come back and get you. But I have so many pictures I've shown on my TikTok and stuff. I'll show you guys so much more. I just want to know what you guys want to know. But what I can say, I'm going to cut after this and then I'll make the rest since turnabout. I wish I would have um, learned more. I wish I would have taken it in because as soon as I left there, I went right back to the same environment, people, places, and things. I went right back to it. $60,000 down the drain. Um, it was cash. And uh, thank gosh, my parents, I guess, I'm not going to say could have afforded it. I'm not going to say that because um, at that time they couldn't have, they couldn't have afforded it. Um, but they put it all out there to try. But um, I think that they, that place could have helped people if they ran it right. Maybe, um, I, on my TikTok, I showed there is, I, there's, there's a rules sheet. I have all of the info still, all the rules that they give you and you're there and all like you have to walk laps nonstop, all these laps, anything you do to get in trouble, you walk laps that there's big board on the wall and like everyone's name, you write, you walk laps and that's before you can do anything else. Like in the morning you get up, you do all the get eggs. You're all, you're working the ranch, not the farm, the ranch, um, hay bales. I was so strong when I left there from all the hay bales and, and, and they did. And it was, uh, I'm not going to say fun, but you made some really good friends. Um, I have a friend, Lexi, who, uh, I think I'll like be a forever friend with. She, um, has had kids and all that. We don't talk all the time, but like, she's someone I know I'll be friends with for a while. Wait, I have some of my stuff right here. Actually, My parents wanted me to shred it all. They're like, get rid of your turnabout ranch stuff. I found it in the attic not too long ago, but I was like, why would I get rid of it? <laughs> like this is, so this is me. We had disposable cameras back then, way back then. Um, and you could bring those only. So this is what I slept in. This was the circle that I was speaking about that you were put in right away. I think that's called intake. And, um, yes, I made a scrapbook or I think my mom did. One of us did. Um, and this is where you showered. Okay. You stood there and you had another one of these buckets that you poured water from the Creek, the Creek you shared with cows, um, all the other animals that pooped and all that crap. This is also the same water down at the Creek that you boiled your ramen noodle water with same shower water. Right. And after you have to dump this back in the Creek, right. And that same shower, dirty water, all that, that you, you know, get the water from for the stove. So how, uh, you know, clean is that, right? <laughs> same room. I remember that. Uh, and this is in the little cabin. There's a little cabin right out front of this. Uh, is that the cabin? I don't know. Um, there's a little cabin, or that might be where the chickens are. There's a little cabin, probably a little bigger than that. And two guys sit there uh, on different shifts with a shotgun. When everyone's sleeping like this for snakes, they make sure no snakes. There's one port potty and that's where you go to the bathroom. And, um, it was insane. That's a whole, I can do a turnabout video, but, um, I wanted to tell my story. Turnabout is not my story. It, it is part of my story, but it is not my whole story. So I will make another video from turnabout till now. Um, I know I've been all over the place, but I swear. <laughs> I do have a lot of value, I swear. But please leave anything below that you want to know more about, so anything that you can relate to. Um, any questions about this part so far? I'm not going to edit this video a bunch up because I just want it to be like a conversation. Um, I know a lot of people like really cut up their videos and make them, you know, so seamless, but that's not me. I just want this to be us. And, um, yeah, I have two beautiful kids. Um, I have an Etsy business online. Um, but I'm looking for some more work. So that's a little bit about me. And, um, yeah, if you can relate to anything so far, let me know and anything you want me to share more about, and I'll be getting up another video a uh, day or two. All right. Thanks. Make sure to follow.